Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fuel Truck. Rather, how the fuck do I start this thing in the fearsome Kamov KA-50 attack helicopter? Now, some people believed this to be a death trap of a helicopter, and they're not wrong. But the startup can be a little bit daunting as well. However, everything's divided into nice, neat sections in terms of where things are laid out. And it's actually rather ergonomic, considering it's a single-seat attack helicopter with so much system management. So, let's just start from the top. Oh, it seems that the MI-8 next to us is uh, going to be loud and annoying, so let's go ahead and close our canopy door by pressing right, control, and C. And that will close and lock our door. So, first things first. Again, this is not a super in-depth systems overview, but it is a basic overview of startup procedure, as well as what it does and why we do it. So, number one, let's turn on our batteries. Two, followed by one. You'll hear a slight whine, that's completely normal. There's lots of sounds in the KA-50 and you'll just have to get used to them. So what this does is turns on the power from our batteries to the rest of our systems. But right now, nothing's really using that power. From there, we turn on our AC systems generator, left and right. And what that will do is once the engines are on, it will provide power to our left and right hand systems. And uh, the APU will actually provide power initially. From there, we can turn on our forward and aft fuel pumps. You'll hear a little click, click, which is totally normal. From there, we turn on our fuel quantity power, which provides power to our fuel gauge. Next, we turn on our left and right fuel shutoffs and close the switch covers, as well as open and turn on the pa uh, the fuel shutoff for the APU, or auxiliary power unit. It's basically like a separate engine to start the main engines, in case you didn't know. Most aircraft have APUs. The F-15 has an APU, the A-10 has an APU. Most modern day aircraft have APUs. Then what we want to do is turn on our power to our VHF systems, one and two. We can turn on our intercom if we wanted to, but we'll leave that off. We'll turn on the power to our data link, as well as the power to our VHF and UHF data link talk power, and this other data link power switch. So what we did was we turned on our power for both our VHF radios, which are just standard communications radios, as well as the three power switches that you need to activate your data link, which is essentially a system through your computer on board, uh, also called the ABRIS, which lets KA-50s in a flight talk to each other. So you can use all this jazz and send target information to each other, and it's really neat. Next, what we're going to do is open this black and red switch cover and flick up all three switches and close the cover. This arms our ejection seat, which we will hopefully not have to use during the startup procedure. And after that, this is the one that most people miss, is a small switch here next to the ejection seat power, and that turns on our weapon control. So that feeds the weapon systems their power. Without that, you can't fire your weapons because they won't be powered. We're going to go ahead and turn on our IFF, our Identify Friend or Foe system. Even though it's not technically modeled in DCS, it's nice to turn on because you never know when they might implement it. Then we're going to turn on our power to our navigational systems. And let's go ahead and turn on our anti-collision beacon just for show to show people that, hey, we are in fact starting up.
Next, what you want to do is turn on the EEG, or the Electronic Engine Governor, for both your left and right engines. This allows the engines to spin at the proper speeds as well as maintain rotor speed. We can go ahead and turn on our blade tip lights, our formation lights. We'll even turn on our uh, console lighting here, just for ease of use. And we'll also turn on our navigation lights. So, things are starting to get a little bit brighter around here, huh? Next, what we want to do is start our APU, or our auxiliary power unit. This will allow us to start individual engines as well as provide power to the rest of the systems in the aircraft. With your engine start selector switch set to APU, which it is by default, this middle setting, you can go ahead and press start. And you'll see on your left hand side, it'll say APU valve open. And this gauge will come up, assuming that it's taking fuel. If it's not taking fuel, the APU will not start. And once it's up and online, it will say APU on. Then you know you're good to go. Next, before we start the engines, we're going to want to turn off our rotor brake, which is the brake that holds the rotor stopped, right here, just by clicking on this black ball uh, lever. Then we're going to bring up our throttles with the page up key by default, or if you have it mapped, you can bring it up that way. And we're going to let it sit in the automatic position. It's got a lock there. It's got like a little notch that pops in, so it'll stick there nice and safe. Now what we can do, since we have APU running, we can start turning on our ABRIS, which is our computer system and let that warm up and get all its self-check stuff out of the way. We're going to go ahead and take our engine selector switch, click it once to bring it to left hand, and we're going to press and hold start and let go. On the right hand gauge here, for the RPM, you'll see the RPM start to rise. As it rises, you'll feed in the fuel by clicking in this left lever here, this engine cutoff valve. When up, we'll apply fuel to the engine. And it'll start to spool up. As you can see, our HUD's starting to come online. And this small green lamp that says Start VLV will fade away. And then we can go ahead and start our right engine once that lamp is out. So right hand selected, press Start. Start valve is online, and we'll see our engine number two start to come up in RPMs. So we feed it fuel with the engine cutoff valve. We'll see the exhaust gas temperature rise here, as well as the percent RPM for engine two, or our right hand engine, come up and it will match the RPM of engine number one, rise slightly, and then fall to a normal setting. Our Abris has finished starting up. But let's watch this engine RPM gauge. So they'll match, they'll rise slightly, and fall to a nominal position. So that's your engine governor kicking in and saying, okay, this is a good speed to run at. Our Abris has started successfully. We don't have any particular waypoints to go on, but let's go ahead and click nav and bring up a map overview of the area that we're going to be flying at. It seems we're at Mozdoc. If we wanted to zoom in or out on the uh, map, what we can do is press map and then scale plus, scale minus for zoom in and zoom out respectively. And there is the whole map here 
it's in its full detail. So that's fun to learn. But we're just going to leave that be for now. If we had weapons, we would arm them with this. But we can go ahead and turn on our Schwall sensor. The switch to turn on our Schwall is just in front of our engine cutoff valves. It's the K041. So now that our engines are online, they are in fact producing power, we can go ahead and turn off our APU. With this button up front, APU shut off. You'll hear it just fade away. And we can go ahead and turn off the fuel feed to the APU as well. Our Schwall sensor is warming up and online. Our HUD is online, more or less. And uh, our next step is actually on the back wall panel. We've got a few. One is our INU, which is our inertial navigation unit, which will apply the HUD here. And it takes a little bit to warm up, generally speaking. Um, after that, you want to turn on your L140 power switch, which is the power to your uh, laser warning system, which is right here. After that, you want to turn on the power to your UV26 countermeasure system, which is right here. So bring that switch up and close the cover. And then finally, after all that, you want to apply power to the ECRAN, which not only lets you interface with the hydraulics, but is also sort of the master caution, self-aware computer for the entire system. The ECRAN display is right here. So we'll go ahead and uh, bring our countermeasures to both sides. We will turn off our anti-collision beacon. Hello, MI8, you giant fat tub. And that will about do it. That is startup in the KMOV KA50. And yes, it's a little bit uh, lengthy. However, you, uh, you get everything nice and easy in terms of layout. And the hardest part is honestly just remembering every step. So I hope this was helpful for you. Oh, one last thing. If you're interested, not it's not required, but you can turn on your uh, heading, bank, and pitch autopilot helpers uh, before takeoff, if you're uh, interested in that. So that will just about wrap things up here in the Kamov K50. I hope it was a productive video for you, and I hope you learned. Um, not only how to start this thing up, but why we do the things that we do, as well as what, at a more basic systems level, each individual step in the sequence does. So thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.